Fellowship is important to the body because everyone has a gift. Something they can use that will strengthen the rest of the church. That gift comes from God for us for that very reason. We must use it to sharpen one another. Paul said in Ephesians 4, 11 through 16, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for the work of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here or there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people and their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him the whole body joined together and held by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. So to recap, it's important to have fellowship with believers. Fellowship is our preparation for the battlefield. Once everyone leaves the company of Christians, it can be very difficult spiritually to maintain oneself. Turn in your Bibles to Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12. We'll conclude with this verse. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Paul is using this imagery of pairs, but in this last line, he talks about a cord of three strands. I believe that three strands are you, me, and the Lord. The Lord's word and the Lord's will. In order for a rope to be strong, it has to have a pattern and it has to have consistency. And just like a strong rope, we also have to have a pattern in our life and a consistency with one another and the Lord in order to be successful. Let's pray. Lord, you have told us not to forsake the gathering of the body. It's in our time of fellowship that we can sharpen each other as iron sharpens iron. I pray, Lord, that as we leave this place that we will be alert to the opportunities to share Christ with others, as well as aware of the enemy and how he is looking to kill, steal, and destroy. Go with us, Lord, as we leave this place. In your holy name, Jesus. Amen. All right. Let's go spread the word. Let's rock and roll. Hey guys, what's up? Yeah. 
All right, well, before we begin, it looks like we got a new person here today. Who is that? Oh, duh, that's my fault. This is my friend Rachel. Rachel, this is everyone. Hi, everyone. Hey. So how do you two know each other? Can I tell him? I'm gonna tell him. So I was having a really, really weird day on Tuesday. I hadn't slept well for a few days. I was really exhausted and just in a very place. I really wanted to just melt back into bed, but I had to keep moving. At the very least, something told me to get out of the house. So I decided to treat myself to a fancy coffee and dessert. I went in with a selfish mission. Get in, get caffeine, get out. I didn't plan on talking to anyone. I was not in the mood. While waiting in line, I just sort of zoned out. Then I heard some rustling from the person ahead of me. She seemed kind of flustered and panicked, foraging through her bag. I heard her tell the barista, oh no, I think I left my wallet at home. Yeah, I totally knew what she was going through. I've been there more times than I care to admit. So I took a step forward and said to her, I got you covered. I could see the relief in her eyes and a smile came across her face. She whispered her gratitude as I handed the barista my credit card. After we received our drinks, I asked if she would like to join me. So Rachel and I sat and talked for a couple of hours about all kinds of stuff. We talked about how hard it was for her young daughters to both be in school this year and what a huge adjustment that would be. In fact, I'm nervous about the same thing next year. I told her about the numerous parents going through the same thing in our small group. In doing so, I realized that I too was being encouraged. It was a really great time. And before we finished our coffee, I invited her to join us today. And here we are. That's awesome. Well, welcome to 24-7. Okay, so how's everybody else doing? John, how about you? How are you doing? That's a good question. I had a moment at work a few days ago that basically called into question everything I ever thought about my spiritual maturity. So yeah. <coughs> okay, well there's these two guys at work that are basically really hard to show love to. I actually get upset thinking about them. They know that I'm a Christian, and they always make sure to remind me whenever possible, especially if I get mad. They love to get me worked up. They love controversial topics because they know I'll end up saying something about it. But apparently something I said in the past really caught their attention. Anyway, I needed to get something signed by my boss. When I walked into his office, these guys were already sitting in there. So my boss asked me to come in and sit for a minute. As soon as I closed the door, I knew something was going down, but it was difficult to predict what they were up to. He looked at me and the first thing he said was, John, I want your opinion about something, you know, from a religious perspective. Unlike other attacks, he was kind enough to fire a warning shot. I froze, immediately surveying the room. It was most definitely a trap. I was gonna get ambushed, so I put my defenses up, Then he fired again and again and again. I'm a good person, right? I'm nice to most people. I donate to charity. I've never cheated on my wife. I don't even have a speeding ticket. So I buckled down and tried to remember what I said so I could put a plan together. But he went on. These guys tell me that you believe the good works amount to very little in the grand scheme of life. You see, I've got a problem with that. To me, that sounds like you believe that some criminal scumbag can ask for forgiveness in their final moments and be accepted into heaven. Am I not better than someone like that? I like to say that a thousand things started going through my head, but I was empty. The only thing I could muster was something like, are you sure you want to hear my answer? Wow. I know. What happened next? That started a hailstorm of scenarios. Can someone from ISIS be saved? What about pedophiles? What about murders? What about pedophile murders? What about someone who commits suicide? I 
tried responding, but I kept getting jammed up with my words. Those were rapid-fire questions that I thought I knew the answers to, and maybe I did, but I didn't have the verses memorized to support my claims. Everything I tried to say failed to make an impact, like, at all. They just kept coming at me more and more. Laughing at me, taunting me. I realized I was outnumbered and ill-equipped for this battle. The last thing I wanted to do was to make things worse or shut them down for future discussions. So I took the only option I had. I retreated back to my desk, defeated and broken. Felt like a failure. John, this is huge. Excuse me? They came to you knowing your spiritual background, so you're making an impact on them. We will lose many battles, however, in this moment, we realize, like you did, that we don't give up. Uh, we all need a relationship with God and each other to continually grow and prepare for moments like these. I cannot stress the power and the encouragement I personally get from this small group. I hope you feel it too. This is where we pick each other up, dust each other off, and start all over again. We're brothers and sisters who must band together to proclaim the love and the word of Jesus Christ. This is family. We'll keep you in our prayers during upcoming weeks. And, and speaking of family, where's Sarah? She hasn't been here in over a month. Does anyone know where she's been? Well, like we learned last time, we know very well that too much time away from the fellow believers like this group is never a good thing. Who's willing to follow up with her this week? I'll do it. Excellent, thanks. Let's pray. Father, we come to you today weary and seeking your comfort. Grant us wisdom from your word that we may be strengthened from it and each other today. I ask this in your master's name, Jesus. Amen. Okay, let's get started. Let's load up. This is gonna be epic! 